three pillows. Oh there my god, go. I'm so tiny. You know the funny thing is, I'm 5'9", but I have a double scoliosis, so I'm meant to be three inches taller. We should be one foot apart. So I'm actually stunted. I think that I'm a bit stunted because of my chronic illness. I was on steroids oh. from the age of seven, and steroids can stunt your growth. So that's your claim. <laughs> yeah. Hello, lovely people. And welcome to a collab many people asked for. Yes, a lovely Hannah Whitten. And I've been dying to talk to you, Hannah. Yes, me too. And I've, I've had this request a lot as well. And oh. it's finally happening. And today we are actually discussing one of my most asked questions. Oh, really? Which is, am I disabled enough? And yeah. what counts as being disabled? Which I think about a lot. <laughs> a big topic. But I thought that... We could discuss it because we come from kind of different backgrounds. We've had very different medical experiences. Yeah. If you want to explain a little bit about your whole body situation. Body situation, yeah. So I have ulcerative colitis, which is a chronic illness, a form of inflammatory bowel disease. And I was diagnosed when I was seven. Various flare-ups between seven and 15. And then in remission, healthy, fine, between 15 and 25. And then had a really severe flare-up. Um, had to have emergency surgery to have my colon removed and now I have a stoma and I need a stoma bag. Always had this chronic illness. Mm. I've now been thrown into this world of disability, especially being online a lot. I feel like I've been thrown into it even yes. more of like all of the politics Definitely. around it and stuff as well. Because <laughs> there can be a lot of politics with disability and yeah. what counts and what is good enough <clears throat> and what isn't. And I've experienced that a lot myself because I have a genetic disability. I actually have two genetic disabilities. I have one from each parent. Oh really? Is that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thanks mum and dad. Excellent. One is a nerve condition. It means I have holes in the myelin sheath which protects your nerves. If you think of your nerves like electrical wire, mm -hmm. so they have that plastic coating on the outside. Mine has holes in. It's very easy for me to paralyze a nerve or to damage a nerve. Yeah. So if I put pressure on it, lean on my elbow for too long, I actually did that in an exam, paralyzed both of my arms for a year and a half. And that's when I found out I actually had this thing. I was 17. And did you, you had like, a lot of symptoms before then? Oh, so many, yeah. yeah. And everyone just thought that I was a bit like lazy and useless. And oh my God. I got yeah. told that my whole childhood. And then I was seven, got 17 and they were like, oh yeah, you have an autoimmune condition. And oh, mine's an autoimmune oh, condition. Oh. Apparently, women are more likely to yes. get autoimmune diseases. Like, I don't actually remember being ill. It's so weird. My Before memory. Seven. No, like, because I think when I was seven was when I first started getting symptoms as well. So my parents were like, really like, no, we need a... No, they kept on going back we to the doctors. Like, no, this is not normal. Our child's poo is not normal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually remember, like, the pain or being ill or anything. I remember, like, all of the medical procedures, though. I amazing. don't take medication anymore because I have the surgery. Which is then kind of like such a difference because mm -hmm. for me it was definitely that point of I knew that there was something wrong, I didn't know what it was and then I got diagnosed and suddenly it was like oh okay I'm disabled now but I'm not like I've been disabled all along. Yeah. But now I know I am but for sure. Did you like own that word like from the moment you got diagnosed? Well I had this moment where I'd been in hospital on and off for months, whereas they were trying to find out what was wrong with me, and I had this lumbar puncture that went wrong. So I dehydrated mm -hmm. my brain, and I had to be in a dark room for two years, and I couldn't have any light, sound, or touch. I didn't really get to go out into the outside world very much. I was just living in hospital. And then I went on a weekend that I was let out from hospital. Wow. I got to go with my dad to a fair. I needed to go to the toilet, and I had these two paralyzed arms, and I hadn't actually been to the toilet by myself since uh. this has happened, because I'd been surrounded by nurses. Yeah. I had my mum. I'm 18, I don't really want to ask my dad to come. Yeah, oh. Basically managed to go to the toilet by myself and I was very, very proud. And I walked out of the door, there was this kind of young mum outside with this buggy that had a baby in. They always put the baby changing table in the disabled toilet, which is ridiculous. Yeah, I've never thought about that before. So I came out of the door and this lady was so angry at me, she jammed the buggy into my legs and just went, oh not disabled or with a child then. <gasps> and just like smashed straight past me into the disabled toilet. And I just stood there and burst into tears. And I felt so guilty with myself because I hadn't said, no, I'm disabled, like yeah. owning it. I had never said I'm disabled before. This was like the first time that I kind of realized, oh, this is my life now. Mm. And I felt just so guilty that I hadn't stood up for myself. I've never had being accused that way around. I've had situations where I'm stood outside the accessible toilet waiting to use it and this, this woman came out of it and she wasn't visibly disabled but obviously like I don't know if she was and I also don't look visibly disabled. She looked at me and goes, oh thank goodness you're not in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> so still need it. 
like, and I thanks, like, lady. But, but instead, I just laughed along with her. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a weird one, but I haven't had like that kind of abuse. Yeah. But I've heard stories from a lot of people with stomas who have experienced that, and so often I'm like sat on the um, toilet thinking in my head, what am I gonna say if someone like accuses me when I come out of this toilet if I'm going to use the accessible toilet like I have a radar key I I like have it with me and I'll like hold it out like I'm prepared my access with like with my <laughs> give me my access. disabled card <laughs> I have a little card that says this person has a medical condition. They need to use the toilet. Oh, um, in case anyone actually confronts you. Yeah, yeah. I often have the thing of there isn't really such a thing as a disabled card, and mostly the laws in this country mean that you shouldn't ask someone for proof of their disability. That is the law. Again, I've had fantasies in my head where I go, "You want proof?" and I'm like, <laughs> pull down my pants and like show them my scar and my stomach. Like, here it is. <laughs> that was my moment of being like disabled now right yeah and then funnily enough a few months after that uh, i was on a bbc show called britain's missing top model about yeah. disabled girls <laughs> so some of us had had like this big moment in our lives where things had changed and some of the others have been like oh, i was just born without a hand i don't really think of myself as disabled and then some others were like i'm a disability rights activist where are you on that I personally identify myself as a disabled person. Yeah. And like that, I'm also a lesbian. It gets just a thing. But I really just like that kind of person first language. Yeah, it's person with a disability. I know that some people like really love that and they hate disabled person. I like since again, like having the surgery and stuff, I'm like, I don't understand the politics of this. And I know that some people really like one or the other. I think one is more British and one is more American as well. Yeah. And also like, I definitely go in and out of identifying as disabled because for me, it almost like depends on the situation that I'm in. Oh, yeah. No, this is a disabling situation. And some people are like, yeah, you, you're disabled now. Like you're allowed to like identify yeah. as disabled. And But then I've got that voice in my head of like, but I'm not but disabled enough. That's the thing that was the problem in the show. Some of us were very much like, I am disabled and you are not because you don't look like me or you um, don't have a thing. So like I had just been really, really ill. I could stay awake for about three to four hours a day. I was taking really strong painkillers. I couldn't eat much. But then that meant that obviously when you look at me, you don't necessarily know that there is something wrong. Yeah, you don't see all of that other Which stuff. Which some of the girls found to be quite a problem because they were like, she shouldn't be allowed to be on this show representing disabled people because you can't see her disability. What? That's not how it works. Like sometimes the most visible disability is the least disabling. Yeah, you can't judge it based because on like, you're like how much well, you Because well, I just go around my day to day life. So yeah. what is your whole idea of this whole looks disabled? Yeah, because you use a wheelchair sometimes yeah. as well, yeah. Being like temporarily disabled is a really interesting mm. place to be in. Like a friend of mine was in a a bike car accident recently and she broke her foot and so hasn't been able to walk on it and stuff and has been in a wheelchair and has basically like she was like housebound and couldn't leave the house by herself yeah. for like two three months and is still needing a wheelchair but like somewhere down the line in the next few months she won't anymore I think it's really interesting like are people who are maybe in, in that kind of situation temporarily do they identify as yeah. disabled see i think disability is a very weird creature <laughs> in that it's an identity right much like being a lesbian is an identity this is me <laughs> but it's a part of your identity that can change you can be disabled by something mm. you can have that thing whatever that thing is fixed and then be like oh yeah, and it, but it could be like a new like medical invention that mm. helps and, and like fixes a part of you. Or it could be some things that society does. Again, things I'm learning about. Mm -mm. But it's like, there, there might be a situation that is disabling to you. Yeah. But then if you adapt certain things in that situation, it might not be anymore. But then still disabled. It depends on like how you look at it, I don't know. To wade into another sticky topic. Ooh. Uh, deafness. So right. like capital D, deaf yeah. and lowercase d. One point in that is that a lot of people don't consider themselves to be disabled. I'm not disabled, it's the world around me that is disabling. Mm. And then you bring in cochlear implants, which a lot of the world, the hearing world, who have never dealt with anyone deaf can see as like, oh, but that's fixed now. Like it's fixing the deafness, right? So then it's good. And people are like, well, no, it doesn't fix the deafness. That's ridiculous. You're still a person who is deaf. Like mm -hmm. that's an identity. Having something adaptive doesn't make it go away. Yeah. So a lot of things can be disabling mm -hmm. in terms of chronic illnesses. It's not just the physical things. 
because physical things you can maybe look at and immediately see and think, oh, that's high on the totem pole of disability. Sure. But my point is, there is no totem pole. <laughs> it's all a lie. <laughs> varies by the individual person, physical and mental well-being. I was gonna add in the mental side mm. of things as well. Um, mental health issues within disability because it can be disabling. But I don't think we allow for that as much in society. I have anxiety. I am disabled. People are like, what? That that doesn't make any yeah. sense. What? No, but my anxiety literally disables me. To me, yeah. from the internet, from the it internet, feels yeah. like all of our education. <laughs> <laughs> it feels to me like the policing of disability and disabled people is done a lot more by able-bodied people than it is by disabled people. Oh, I'm so sick on Twitter of seeing someone post, because I follow a lot of disabled people, who post things and they're like, la, 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 and they'll use the word as a, you know, as a disabled person or as a person with a disability. And then there's all these comments underneath from able-bodied people going, oh no, you're not allowed to say that. You're supposed to say person with a disability. Oh, you're supposed to say disabled person. Uh... The person's like, screw you. And they're picking at the language rather than mm. like the content. Other than having the chronic illness, I've been able-bodied my whole life, especially like between 15 and 25, not having any symptoms. Other than taking medication every day, I was like, I'm an able-bodied person. Um, and now having acquired Again, I'm like, but disability? Someone, yeah. I don't even know. But if you had to tick a box on a form that said, do you have a disability? I would tick yes, I think. Because I would just want whoever that form was for to know the full picture, yeah. I think. As you should. As is your right. When I was pre-surgery in the hospital mm. and I was talking to the stoma nurse who was like going through everything with me, she said to me, you're allowed to use disabled toilets but you're not legally disabled. And oh. yeah, and that just like stuck in my head and I mentioned that to a few people and they were like, there's no such thing as legally disabled. Yes, can and we just yeah. quickly, <laughs> the whole legally disabled thing, it's like, oh, if the government has recognized that you have a disability and you are therefore in receipt of disability living yeah. allowance or personal independence payments, then you're disabled. What the hell? Yeah. No, in no way is this true. In order to apply for any of the disability benefits, you're only allowed to apply six months after it first started. Did right. you know? No, to make sure that. it's not something you recover from. God forbid. Yeah. <laughs> And then once you have applied, it takes like six months essentially for the whole process. So it must be at least a year. And in that time, you pretty much have to pay for everything yourself. So I went from being, no one said I had anything wrong with me. And then suddenly I had paralyzed arms and it was like, oh, yeah. can I need some help? There is not, I think, a hard and fast rule as to what counts as being disabled, especially when it comes to the government deciding. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Also, once they decide you are disabled, which they have decided I am disabled, they don't send you a card. <laughs> and they'll like, carry this with you everywhere. I think that's mm. what I used to think. Not that there was a card, oh. <laughs> but the, the government decided who was disabled and who wasn't. And yeah. that was what I used to believe. I don't have parking card, I don't have disability benefits or anything like that. Oh, so the government don't know I'm disabled, so I'm not disabled. It's, yeah. it's just like a minefield. <laughs> I, I think because I've acquired having a stoma and, and surgery and stuff, it's having to unpack all of those mm. ableist thoughts that I had before. Have you found mm as someone who works on the internet, mm. that you have got comments about, you're not disabled. A little bit. The the main ones have kind of been, not you're not disabled at all, but like you're not disabled enough. I already had a platform when that happened. Yeah. And so that's an, an interesting dynamic of like, oh, I've got all these people who already watch my content and I'm known for like talking about sex. I like to talk about taboo topics in general. And then I like disappear for a month. And so I knew that I wanted to like make videos yeah. about it of like, this is what happened to me. I wasn't expecting like the response that it was, but there was obviously a minority of comments. Oh, and like this thing's happened to her and now she's becoming a disability advocate. Like how dare she? She doesn't know anything. She's not disabled enough. Those videos for me were like so healing for yeah. me. And they were my way of communicating with other members, the Ostomy community online. And like, I watched so many videos of young women with stomas when I was like lying in hospital, just like, what is this new life that I have Goodness, now? what will happen now? And so like those videos to me are really useful. I've always said like, you are literally watching me learn. But yeah, I actually started my YouTube channel because I got hate on the internet about not looking disabled enough. Now I'm gonna prove yeah, my like, disability wow. to you. Someone left me a comment on my Instagram that was like, you're a disgrace to the disabled community. How dare you call yourself disabled? That you look like there's nothing wrong with you. Wow. 
well, as someone who has a physical and learning disability, I think you'll find I do. I think what we've learned is it varies from person to person. Don't judge people. Yes. From the exterior, you have no idea what's going on with them. <laughs> no. I also don't feel like you have to be validated by outside. If you feel like the thing that you have is disabling, even if other people are telling you it's not and you're like, but I know it is. Keep on your path. I wanted to mention yes. one thing that ties into the video that we're gonna film on, yes. on my channel. I was trying to grapple with how I personally define disabled and if yeah. that and if that like works with like my condition what i came up with was if the apocalypse were to happen would i just be able to go leg in it i'm going to try and survive now and i thought no i wouldn't because oh. of my condition more it's be more very on that sanitary more <laughs> right. i've been running for a week now there's shit everywhere anyway <laughs> so on my channel we're going to be talking about disability versus the apocalypse and whether or not we would survive different kinds of apocalypses let us know in the comments if you think that is <laughs> this is my the dictionary <laughs> definition of disabled this is my if you survive the apocalypse. And yeah. quickly, please go to Hannah's channel and watch that because... Yeah. Thank you for watching, you yeah. lovely people. See you next time. Bye.